completely unplanned unboxing of her Endure the Stars 1.5. It's some kind of board game. I don't know anything about it. It uh, was funded on Kickstarter, a Kickstarter I completely uh, missed a few years ago. So I can't remember having seen anything about this uh, or know anything about how it uh, went. I just got super lucky and got this uh, thing at a uh, Facebook uh, board game swaps and sales group for, uh, I think I paid 40 euros, including shipping for what seems like a very good deal. And I've just been uh, scrolling quickly down here, the, the Kickstarter pledge page. There's some kind of base board game. I'm only in this for the uh, miniatures. Some, some cool baddies and some heroes that looks like they can work in sci-fi gaming or cyberpunk games. I don't know how many stretch goals were unlocked. But I know there's a couple of these boxes, uh, the Primus leader box and some uh, gender variant character classes and some art book, uh, lots of stuff. So around 100 and, uh, 130 euros Kickstarter value of stuff um, that I got for 40. So I'm just going to open up the boxes and uh, see what's in there because yeah, might be some cool miniatures. Let's just check a, a look here. So um, I think this is one. So we have uh, some boss monster boxes, some kind of a Kickstarter exclusive stuff, uh, survivors, gender variants. So I think they made an you know opposite gender of all the characters, and the main box. So that's the that's the plan for this stream. Open up the boxes and see what uh, kind of toys I've been given. And uh, tomorrow my kid can uh, run amok and uh, play with the miniatures. Then I have to sort them and um, and sell all the excess because these are board game minis. They're cheap, but uh, there's probably going to be a lot of duplicates, as often the case. Um, so I'm gonna sell some of those. And perhaps even break even on the uh, investment and end up with free models. I like free models. So yeah, let's open up the box and take away all the stuff that I don't care about one bit. Some kind of uh, crew stuff. Double-sided boards, pretty standard. These will probably go to some RPG types of people. Rule book, I'm never gonna read that. Of this black book. Oh, Kickstarter uh, art book thing, fluff. Looks in good shape. Might keep that on the shelf. Full summary. Nah, we're into miniatures. And this is the gold. All right. Let's see. Here. Okay, so these. Um, 12, 11, 12, 11. Okay, so they all have uh, numbers on the bottom on the base. Uh, one of them was called uh, 11 and one of them was called 12. Let's see if they uh, there's any difference on these guys. I don't think there is. Okay, so, oh, yeah, okay, so... He's a uh, light thingy, whatever. He looks like a deep sea fish. He's on one side and the other guys is on the other. Well, that seems completely random. All right, so um, let's have a look at this uh, monster right here. Big dude, very tall compared to a regular 28 millimeter. Let's just find one of those. Big monster, wings, cybernetic enhancement. I know nothing about the game. Absolutely no idea what the board game is about. Um, so, yeah. But he's got alien skin and scythes uh, and a lot of cybernetic enhancement. 
Nothing on the face there, that's pure alien. But he's got robotic legs. Let's just move the camera a bit here. There we go. He's got uh, robotic legs. I don't know what I'm going to use this guy for. But he's pretty cool. Big baddie. Uh, high level stuff. Armor, what's that uh, rich on his nose? It's some kind of like uh, Soyberg when he gets in the zone. Like a mohawk. So, yeah, he looks kind of like a lampfish, deep sea stuff, um, but with the uh, robotic augmentations. Uh, the robot stuff, he ain't going to have much use in uh, Zona Alpha. So, I don't know. But, yeah, Stargrave is out soon. And uh, I know there are some Danish produced uh, games coming. So, that might be uh, that might be good as well. Man, absolutely terrible setup today. So there are, I saw on the Kickstarter, there should probably be, let's just go back and check of these guys, how many there are in the box, because I might get a, I, I think I might have a double up here. Uh, the guy with wings, 14 Icarus miniatures in two poses. I think they all have the same pose. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. I got 20 of these guys, so that's cool. Um, so more than, than what's listed on the Kickstarter. Next box. Let's see what these are. Oh, these look good. Take a look at this dude. He's scary. He looks right at home in some kind of swamp. Um, long arms, that's his skin right there, but he has robotic claws at the end. Same goes for his legs, they're all, he's all robot legs here. Tentacle face, kind of blood suckeries, that is flesh in there on the stomach, uh, and some kind of harness. Some kind of power pack on his back. That must be for these uh, robot legs. Spikes on the backs. I'm not sure what the story is here, but these are aliens, and they've been augmented with robotic stuff, but they are cool. Um, I mean, there's a proper horror feel to these guys. These could fit into the zone. Skulking around. Zone of uh, exclusion and Zona Alpha. They seem to uh, to be the same kind of pose, all of them. All these guys seems the same, but they're probably easy to. I'm going. I'm not. I'm going to sell some of them. So there are ten of these guys. And how many is this? Just on the Kickstarter here. Let's just see. Uh, Kickstarter list uh, seven of these guys. Maybe they're unlocks from uh, stretch goals. Um, but they should be. They should be able to. Because this is that kind of board game plastic that we see so often, so so we should be able to uh, hot water bend them, just cut them off the base, you know, make uh, I, I could probably with the boiling water bend his leg back, uh, raise an arm, so you can easily make four or six different poses with these guys. Um, it could be good for uh, some post-apocalypse action, and um, this is not a test. This this camera annoys me. I'm just gonna move the computer closer here, see if we can hide it. Still in the show. That's this is how we roll. So yeah, this is not a test. Augmented monsters, some kind of mad scientist, Sona Alpha. They don't really fit the games that I play. Cyberpunk, nah. So yeah, please bring out Stargrave or Space Pirates or Xeno Hunters, another Danish game. So that's two bags from the base game. So far, it's all monsters. Let's take out these guys. We do we have more than? Yeah. Okay. So again, two poses. The it seems like every board game needs this kind of dog monster. But so four legs, tiny arms. 
four-legged uh, T-Rex, perhaps? Alien head, that's his skin there. Again, robotic augmentations or... Yeah, it is augmentations. So he has like these small tiny robot claws there and in the front. So these guys, the, all these aliens have, have augmented limbs. Um, Biomechs for Gamma Wolves. Yeah, I don't know if there's Biomechs in Gamma Wolf yet. But that could be cool. Gamma Wolves, the, the new game coming out from Osprey in November. Mech Warfare. But they could, could just smash him in the wasteland, I guess, if there are wandering enemies. A bit more dynamic pose here. It's like a war horse standing on his hind legs. And there is a lot of these guys. So these must be some kind of Minion, let's see here, six, ten, fourteen, eighteen, twenty-two, twenty-six, thirty of these little critters. So, might keep ten, do a neutral base so they can work for both sci-fi games, whatever I figure out they could be used for. But they will uh, be enemies for something. 30 of these guys. I think this is a mixed Kickstarter. I do. Because it says uh, 21 Swarmer miniatures in three poses. Is there? Did we see three poses? Stands one. Uh, stands two. I didn't th see a three in any of them. I only think there's two poses of these guys. No, this guy has nothing, so... Let's just switch the camera here. All right, oh, there we go. Um, so these guys have different numbers. Oh, they are, okay. So they have different poses here. Um, legs are the same. But look at the arms there. One guy has his tiny tiny t-rex arm raised and the other one has it bent other than that the pose is exactly the same that's getting around it a bit cheap ain't it but 30 guys so that's cool next bag these are some they're they're big dudes take a look at this huge monsters and he's cool. He only has two legs and lots and lots of armor. So a miniature like this, I might actually use uh, in Stargrave on my team. I want aliens on my team. And he doesn't look um, too much like a Xeno, like an enemy alien you have to go in and kill. This guy, he could be uh, an, an intelligent, a sentient species. With uh, just, you know, perhaps give him a, uh, I don't know, some kind of sci-fi weapon in one of his hands. Or just let him beat up people with his robot hands. So this guy is almost entirely robot. There's some skin in there underneath. But not, uh, not a lot. Because he has a fish wipe going on as well on his head. No, he looks like almost a cyborg. That seems like a robot piece on top of his head here. I have to look through the artwork, you know, try to figure out what these guys are. Um, again, loads of guys. Loads of guys. Let's just check this out. Uh, what are these called? The big ones. Jäger miniatures. 14 Jägers. 14 dudes. There's more than 14 here. Four, eight, really sturdy. 12, 16, 20. I don't know if we have to look out if these are stretch goals, but it seems weird that they wouldn't you know, update that in the description. I think I've made an even better deal than I anticipated. Nice guys. These are going to be fun to blow up. I could, of course, put a mad scientist twist on some uh, Zona Alpha. Let's see what else in the box here. Loads and loads and loads of boards, double-sided boards. 
and cards. Never mind those. We'll see if we can unload them to somebody. Dice. Nice. I love dice. And these are nice and shiny. That's a cool teal blue. Shiny black dice. Nice handful. I always use those for something. Those goes in the specialist dice. I love them. I have quite the collection actually now because I've been buying so many weird Kickstarter board games that I'm never going to use with weird uh, dice designs. Like, what's that? Torso? Head? We're never going to find out. So they are going in the, the box with uh, different dice and then there are all manner of tokens. Monster tokens, can't use these for anything, they go out. But these, exclamation marks and numbers, three, four, some uh, sci-fi wounded tokens, some green splatter there for poison, or venom, or acid, a fist. I mean, you can never have too many tokens like this. I have a big box of random tokens for all the skirmish games that I play. So that was the main box. It's obviously been played a couple of times because there were no heroes or no boss monsters, but lots of regular dudes. Let's take this one. Enjoy the Stars Kickstarter crew. I guess that's the guys backing the Kickstarter. Two guys and another box. Let's check this out. <laughs> He's big. And this is a big model. This is from uh, Human Interface Nakatomi Tower. Uh, so it's uh, it's on the big side. This is a 32 mil. It kind of looks like the small ones, right? Same race, perhaps. Also four legs, big arms. This guy has... This is a uh, robot augmentation on his head right there unlike the other fish dudes but it's a weird anatomy I'm not I'm not even sure I think he's that cool I mean giant legs kind of a centaur thing going on here torso is way back in front of those you know ginormous front legs kind of tiny arms it's like he's had his hands or whatever he had removed because he has these robot claws i'm actually intrigued i need to read up on the fluff here what's going on in this game power pack here in the back Let's see if we can check it out here if there is some kind of quick story Co-op sci-fi dungeon crawler uh, set aboard the planet colonizing ship. Okay, so it's on board some kind of ship. Scientists aboard the ship genetically engineered new life forms to explore the planets below, but a catastrophic event known as the fall saw the creatures escape from containment. Now they rampage through the ship, killing everyone they come across. Players assume the roles of the remaining crew, salvaging whatever you can to survive. Okay, so... They're illicit men. They're work aliens. They've been engineered to help colonizing worlds. They look a bit monsterish for that. The feet are kind of starship troopers. Yeah, they are. The feet are kind of starship troopers. But he's not alien enough. So this guy, he's cool. He's worth everything. A mech suit. We, you gotta love mech suit. Like he has some kind of alien vibe going on here. I think perhaps the model is broken there this some kind of blade saw on the shoulder big robot arm there big robot arm there his hands are in there i need to repost this again seems like a the detail are not very sharp here look at his face typical board game plastic it's very sh it's called flat in the surface um but the robot is pretty cool He's hanging in there. 
So you could uh, add a gun. Yeah, all right, a conversion idea here from the chat. Add a gun to this area, that would be good, you know, like a shooter. And then he has the claw over there or the blade. But you need to hot water post this guy because he's driving the mech, right? His legs are fitting there. This arm is fitting. See, so he's bending this arm, but this arm is straight down. And this arm is also bent. But when you look from the inside, it doesn't really follow this one because the hand, his hand is upright and this one is turned. And that's not a very cool, I mean, when you do a mech like this, unless it's mind controlled or something, it would just make sense for, you know, he moves his arms and the robot moves like him. That's how you do a mech. So a bit of reposing on this guy, but he's pretty cool. And he will be used in uh, Reality Edge at some point. Uh, Joseph McGuire is going to release rules for using big mech suits in that. Uh, he can't be used in Gamma Wolves because that's about a wasteland where the mech suits has to fully enclose the pil pilots so they don't die. Uh, and Stargrave as well. I've read the rules for Stargrave and there is a uh, big suit of armor that is super expensive and costs the same as two or three other guys. So it's just, he's an awesome miniature. I mean, mechs are cool and I don't have one of these like alien construction mech things. I could make him into a construction mech as well. I've never had one of those models, so you know, he might lose his face. I might go full on Ripley with this one. That could be cool. Just do a loading mech, female head on him, uh, put some other, instead of the hands, just put up one of those grabbers. Yeah, that might be the way to go. All right, awesome miniature. He must be a hero. Uh, I think he's a Kickstarter exclusive. I don't like Kickstarter exclusive, but I think it's one. Okay. Plastic. Plastic. Sorry about the sound. No noise cancellation here. Um, so two different guys here. There's uh, one sculpt here and one sculpt here. They're all the same. Let's just check the other books here. Another big guy. Uh, cool. A flying monster. He's got a Duke Nukem theme going on here. Biped robot. Uh, some more of those that are the same in the other one. Boss thing. So four, five of these flyers. Uh, five of these uh, robots here. Loads of these guys with the sword and loads of these zombie things or whatever they are let's just try and see what uh, what they are here on the uh on the home page here on the kickstarter so let's see down 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 down, down. what do i have here um okay so the bit guy is called a titan and there's only one of these guys in the box and i got two so lucky me then we have so these guys that I've just picked out, they must be Kickstarter exclusives, but they are not up here on the description. Um, let's go down here, see if we can see some stretch goals. No stretch goals? Are they just... They're Gapex. Okay, so then the genetically engineered planetary explorer candidates. Yeah, searching for a name there. Geps. That's a better name. They are kind of cool. He's painted up like this. He looks like uh, what is called Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. A ship. Are there no. Oh, here, stretch goals. Uh, so all the stretch goals are cards? Okay, so basically, I have no idea what's in the box and why it's there. Uh, perhaps it's from this Kickstarter was called 1.5, so it might be from the first one. I don't know. Uh, can you close up a flyer? Again, yes, I will. The name just rolls off your tongue. Yeah, it does. Gaps. Okay, so short for these monsters are Gaps. So this guy, he reminds me of 
those floating guys from Duke Nukem, but they were kind of big. This he's this guy is all robot. <laughs> he's pretty cool. I mean, there's some. Uh, yeah, he's gonna be perfect for TNT. There's some um, some some 50s sci-fi over the way that he flies, like uh, uh, Cobsworth in Fallout 4. Some kind of weird stabilizers on his back there. I don't know what he's for. I don't have wandering robots in any of the games that I play, but um, yeah, paint one up. For this is not a test, I better start making a robot warband because I have a lot of dudes. Um, a little XCOM. Yeah, there's some XCOM over this guy. Absolutely. So there's this guy. That's the other robot. Um, this is a cool robot miniature. He's not as big as the monsters. I mean, come on, he's smaller than this guy. Uh, I like the long head. He's not too human. He's got some grabbers there. Claws. Not sure why why there's there's these long things here on his back, like on the flyer here as well. It's like they've been trying to copy the the aesthetic on the bots so that they look a bit like the the monsters those fish people monsters is the robot arm it looks more like a worker bot yeah he i don't think he's uh he's a worker bot of some sort sure he's got these hooks here for carrying some stuff so that's probably a worker bot i don't know why you would have a flying bot in your crew but he he's got hands in here it doesn't look like guns but that's an easy conversion again some hot water treatment trying to bend the arms get a few different poses i like this bot it should be easy enough to add a gun to one of his uh, arms might just make some more robots for my cyberpunk security forces uh what do we have here so there's a ton of these girls Kind of like that girl, uh, the main character from, uh, what's it called? The Day After Tomorrow, where he, uh, whenever he dies, the main character, he dies, he resurrects and wins over the day. So she's kind of got that vibe going. The sword is on the small side. It's like, it kind of like, it wants to look like a chainsaw down here. You know, that bit looks like a chainsaw, but it's a blade weapon. And it doesn't have a chain. Uh, once you got some gear here, a knife, pouches. It's a cool model. Street Samurai. I'm going to paint one of these guys up as a punk for uh, cyberpunk gaming. You know, she looks like a ganger. Uh, Low-level Street Samurai, Street Ronin. But I wonder if there's like eight or ten in the box. And they don't look like enemies. So perhaps an ally. I don't know. Keep one or two. Paint one up as a raider. For the wasteland as well you know so one is cyberpunk colors one is uh, post-apocalypse colors get rid of the rest this is a nice model he's got a kind of a zombie vibe going on here raising his arms empty look on his face he's got a machete on the back some kind of electronic is it a backpack? A small backpack. Bare arms, bare chest. Again, no idea what you would use a miniature like this for, but um, so yeah, I've never played Doom, so it wouldn't take much to convert a lot of this into Doom Eternal. I haven't played, I haven't even played the first Doom. I was a Wolfenstein guy, and then went straight on to uh, Duke Nukem. But you know, add another weapon, cut up of a hand, you know. Uh, give him a machete or a sword. There's one for some modern gaming there. Uh, a post-apocalypse raider. Uh, easy to add another head. The head looks like the size of the World War miniatures. So a couple of raiders here. One could be holding uh, two pistols, you know, doing the Boondock Saints, both sides. Uh, Demon Host for 40k. Rogue Psyker, you know, some kind of guy with psychic abilities. Raise him off the base. Use hot water to put his legs together. It looks like he's levitating. Yeah, I'm definitely... I'm going to use this guy four or five times for different poses. Nice sculpt. 
And this guy, there was only one of these. Uh, let's see here. Long rope. Minigun thingy-mabab. You know, he's got like an exosuit on here on his arm. Whatever the freak that is there on his back. Pointing, get over here. Uh, four barrels on the gun there. So he's carrying some kind of minigun. Body armor. Weird robes. I think I'm going to paint this guy up with uh, this thing on his back. He's going to get like a samurai... Uh, pose I'm going to into some uh, cyberpunk uh, triad. He will look right at home in there. Bright, you know, purple or red and gold here on that thing on his back. He didn't show up on the Kickstarter page as well. So, awesome models. Again, some of them, lots of them. You can never have enough robots. You can never have enough of the flying androids. I'm going to paint up a couple of them, sell the rest. Uh, let's see uh, this one. So there were two of these, Gep Bass. Okay, so a Bass Monster, an expansion, card forward, loads of cards, I get a gazillion hit points of those guys. I don't think you want to battle these guys, so they seem to have Preacher. Okay, so that guy was called Preacher. It's a book. It's not a shield. It's a Bible. Oh, that's hard to see. I thought it was uh, like a shield to protect himself from uh, bullet casings or something like that. But it's a Bible on his minigun. <laughs> awesome. Preacher with a minigun. Another Titan card. And then this guy. So I had two of these, and this was an expansion. Uh, cost like, I don't think, 10 pounds or something on the Kickstarter page for this guy. He's big. Um, yeah, he's a huge. Like, he's got some kind of rhinoceros vibe going on with his face. Bebop. Rocksteady type of guy. He's big. No genitals. Nice bear behind. My kid is going to die laughing when looking at this one. So considering how much robotic augmentation they put on all the other guys, this guy, he only has this little thing up here to control the biggest monster of the bunch. And all the other guys were completely covered and robotic augmentations to try and control them. And he's got a tiny little thing here and some small armbands. Kind of a weird alien. Could have painted him up. There's probably going to be some. He could go in. He could go in. This is not a test, you know, as a mutant. Some kind of alpha big brute mutant running around the wasteland um, before shooting him up. So that was that box. And there was uh, one more of those. Why would you buy two of those? I think some guy must have bought a Kickstarter and then bought another Kickstarter uh, somewhere else. It makes no sense. There's some weird content here. Uh, there's also, I saw when I opened it, uh, two of the art books. Endure the Stars, Survivor's Gender Variants. Yes. These are the guys we like. The heroes. Like Ten thousand cards. There's a bit there broken. Let's just see here. Okay, so the green one is a scout. Let let's look. See if there are more scouts in here. Uh, red, yellow, orange, green scout. Oh, another green marine. So there are two kinds of green. And there as well. Okay, so there are two scouts and two marines. Let's see. And this is, yeah, okay. So gender variants, you know, male, female scout. Thanks for doing that. Um, these are 
the light green ones here. First scout, sniper rifle, silencer, thin bent board game plastic, needs some bending out with the hot water. Yeah, kind of bent. It's going to need a bit of work. So oh, these are very light. It's hard to capture here in the camera. Again, very board gamey plastic, you know, very uh, thin, flat details. I think she's kind of rocking some skulls there on her knee pads. Short cloak. Okay, yeah, so she's a scout. Another sniper. I know. She's got some kind of carapace armor. Um, no idea what I'm going to use a girl like this for. She's too sci-fi to work in a modern game. Uh, not wasted enough to do to do uh, post-apocalyptic uh, roles. I don't know. A bit thin. And then the other scout. The male scout. The light armor. Some kind of shotgun thing. Double barreled one. Sword. For a painter like me, it's going to be very hard to bring out. Man, it's getting it's getting hard to catch. It's getting it's gonna be hard to bring out these details because those recessed areas are so tiny that they are probably not even going to take wash kind of well. Cyberpunk stuff. Use it for whatever. Let's see. So the Marines, dark green. Yeah, now we're talking. Of course, he's wearing a long cloak. Nice uh, sci-fi helmet there. Big shooter on the back. Bigger shooter in his hands. This guy's armor is uh, sharper detailed, so it's going to take some uh, some washing nicer. I don't think Marine when I look at this guy. I mean, Marines need to be bulky. I'm not thinking Marine. And perhaps it's the head. You know, his head and this uh, mask he's wearing is kind of slim. So I would just characterize this guy as a scout as well, probably. And it's the cloak. I mean, don't wear a freaking cloak when you're a Marine. And this is the uh, other Marine. So she's pretty cool. Camera or shooter on the shoulder there. It's probably some kind of uh, auspex camera thing. Grenades at the front. Pump gun kind of stuff going on there. Shotgun. Um, let's see. I have to go close here to see her details on her face. I think she's wearing a half helmet. So she's got goggles on. But I think it's her face beneath. But I'm not sure. It could be she's entirely helmeted. Again, she's... Uh, Augmented all over, and just like all Marines, she's uh, striking that um, kind of sexy pose. Because it's a girl miniature. Just give me Bobby from The Expanse. Make a female Marine, make her Bobby. You know, stronger than the other guys. Uh, Captain. Is that red? I think this color is red. Yeah, captain. Okay, so the captain is red. Let's see the leader here. Uh, yeah, she's striking a captain pose. Big flowing hair. Very tiny head. Extremely long legs. It's, she looks almost disproportionate. Right? Look at that little face. Tiny head. Long legs. Mm. Come on. Yeah, all right. So, but the pose is kind of cool, and she does look like a captain or a gunslinger. I don't know what I'm going to do with a model like this either, actually. Might add some more gear. I mean, her hips is twice as wide as her chest. Oh my god, geeks. Uh, this is the other captain right here. But he's 
jacket slung over his shoulder there, big gun on the back, carrying an officer's sword here at the side. He's looking, he's got a real mellow look on his face there. Kind of sad, all the aliens got out. The pose on this guy doesn't really, his, his, his uniform doesn't scream captain. But this is a nice guy. I'm going to use him for something. I mean, I'm going to do a space pirate gang for Star Saga. I'm using him that. Then there's some yellow ones. Engineers. Yeah, she's cool. Okay. Big shoulder mounted gun. Uh, huge whatever thingamabob hammer with a welding torch on it. Flame hammer. I don't know. Uh, apron. So she doesn't get burn marks on her clothing. She's pretty cyberpunk. And some exoskeleton on the legs. Should be cool for uh, hardwired, perhaps. Another engineer. He's got a Thanos vibe going on. Big hood over his uh, face there. Loads of... Yeah, that's exoskeleton and armor and whatever he's wearing here is in hand. It's not bits that are broken off. Small hammers. Are they connected to his uh, exoskeleton? They look like it. So some kind of power thing, small hammers, I don't know. They're kind of weird sculpts. So some of them just, mm, they need conversion work to be cool. That's no problem, but so far it's not like if I've bought this game on Kickstarter and then the heroes they need to be the coolest ones there. And so far, the monsters, that preacher guy, they've been way cooler than the hero models. I think that's subjective, of course, but but still, uh, I don't know what the gray guys are here, medics, okay. So, medic number one. Healing vacuum cleaner there on his hand. Grenade launcher, perhaps. Is anything screaming medding on this guy? Loincloth. Some kind of, looks like, a, this looks like an officer's uniform with buttons there on the side. Uh, hooded head. Backpack for medical gear. But it's not like the models is uh, the model is uh, screaming, medic gas mask on his face. Now, how does the medic in uh, Team Fortress Two work? Does he have like a healing gun? Could be inspired by that. Let's check the other medic. Oh, that's the. Uh... No, she has both of her arms. Okay. Um, Zena like uh, frisbees. Lassos. It makes no sense. They're not intuitive, these models. I need to read up on it. Really, I have to. Because why is she carrying rings? And they're sculpted into a side, so it's going to take some cutting to get them off. Tiny, tiny, tiny arms. Short hair. Again, no kind of medical gear. There's no gear on this saying this is a medic. I mean, they're on a spaceship. The monsters got out. They are the few survivors. Then scavenge whatever gear they have. Now they have to salvage and scavenge on and try to survive. Why is she not wearing medic gear? Oh, glad it's not my job to create high bank. I see uh, another engineer. He's cool. Okay, this is a cool guy. Yeah, he's got. He's he lo he's looking engineer. You know, he has the backpack with the robot arms here to help him do stuff. He's got a gun. Um, does he have some tools? No backpack. And no tools in his tool belt. But he's cool. He's got a proper sci-fi look here with those arms. And then we have two guys left. Two miniatures. The orange ones. They are. The psychics. Okay, so the game has psychics. And she does look like a psychic. 
this is what I was planning to do with that uh, that zombie dude over here, you know, the guy standing something like this, you know, it almost looks like he's fine, her hair is kind of levitating all over the place there, she's pretty cool, she still has a laser rifle or a rifle on her back, that's nice. She could be a cool assassin, you know, add a blade to each of her hand, kind of like a sword dancer vibe going on. That would be nice. Again. Okay, so we talked about sometimes, how do we make a cool sci-fi soldier? We'll just put pouches and belts and webbing all over the miniatures. To the, to the point where it's really almost comical. You have like a guy and he's covered in pouches all over the place, even more than a real soldier would have. That's one way to do it. These have none of it, none, no utility bags, nothing. Just give him one or two, you know, small bag, grenade pouch, ammo pouch, chocolate bar. They have nothing. So the, the sculpts could have done that. I think okay, so this is the guy who lost his arm. How is he? It's probably going to have it like this. Got a migraine going on, pistol raised. This is also this is a nice model. Shooter on the back. Pistol at the side. Is that a pistol? No, it's two knives. Okay, so he has two knives there. Uh Again, no pouches really. It kind of looks like uh, he has like a uh, pilot's helmet on here. And doing a salute. This guy, he's not going to, to do like a psyker pose. I mean, he's not a psyker. He should be pointing this gun, you know. With a saluting before he blows somebody up. I mean, he's got a nice uh, space pirate look going as well. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I think I counted the models, and there is like, um, when I bought him, 130 models for 40 euros. That's cheap. I mean, 1.3 euros per model. Even considering that the heroes are not the best sculpts there is, a bit of conversion work, there are still different models that I haven't already painted up. The monsters, all right, cool. You can always use more robots. Uh, the big monsters, some of them are really creepy. I'm going to find something to use them for. Uh, Volk monsters, they're good for both uh, wastelands, uh, like uh, this is not a test, cyberpunk, games, sci-fi. I'm gonna find a use for, for most of those miniatures for cheap. Kind of boring heroes. Sorry to say, they are. Considering the price, I still consider me uh, lucky. 40 euros for this is nothing. Sell off the board, uh, board tiles to uh, some RPG people for cheap. They're happy. I got an even lower cost. Sell all the random cards and character stuff to somebody because there's always, there's always somebody making their own games willing to take stuff like that. Bring it even further down. Got some new tokens. Got a bunch of new die, sell off some of all the models, and I'm gonna end up with the free stuff. So yay! So that was the totally unplanned unboxing of another board game. Just looking at the models because that's what I think is cool. I don't play board games. I just want to loot it for stuff, uh, and especially when I can get it for free. Sort them out, put them in a bag, put them away, probably never use them, but they were free and they expanded my collection. You can never get too much of that. Thanks for watching. Um, please consider dropping a like on some of the different platforms. You know, uh, I post on Twitter when I go live here on Twitch. Uh, drop a like on YouTube if you want the new videos there. I got games planned, unboxing terrain. I've just started filming some of my hobby stuff. Follow the blog on Facebook. Everything goes in there, or the blogger. And consider joining the Discord community. It's growing. It's a good place to hang out. Good people, good hobbyists, sharing lots of work. Get a microblog. It's a, it's a really nice place to hang out. 
All right. See you again. Bye.